will be now read a second time. I call on the member for Haslow. Deputy Speaker, I rise today to speak to the Broadcasting Legislation Amendment New Media Diversity Bill 2013. I certainly, without unreserved uh, positioning, agree with the comments made by the member for Winkworth. This bill forms part of a package of media reform legislation that this government is trying to ram through Parliament in a desperate last-ditch effort before it runs out of time before an election. Plain and simple, it is an election ploy. If it is an election ploy, then it has to be a control of the media. Not only does the way that this government is trying to push through this legislation raise questions, and I'll move on to that in a moment, okay. but the very content Thanks. of these bills raises serious concerns about our collective direction as a nation if these bills are to be successful. Deputy Speaker, there is no doubt that the proposals before us today are the most onerous regulation of press in peacetime history. This bill represents a bleak future for our nation and for the freedom of media outlets. This package of bill removes the independence of media from government both in terms of ownership decisions and in terms of self-regulation. Deputy Speaker, we have seen all of the grandstanding by both media and this Labor government over the last week with regard to media reform. We have seen ultimatums being thrown out and we have seen media respond in a very colourful way. However, it is vital that we look past this grandstanding and give effective debate to the reality of this situation. The point is that these bills are effectively trying to restrict Australian media's ability to do its job, that is, to inform Australians about current affairs. In Australia, we are fortunate to have a media that is independent of all levels of government and acts as a watchdog to the ultimate benefit of the public. It has been a long-standing, unofficial title that media is the fourth estate in our democracy, an estate that brings to the, uh, to the mind of the Australian public those factors that they need to be aware of. It exposes those who involve themselves in behaviours that are not as acceptable within the society in which we live. And certainly we've seen that over the last 12 months of the exposure of some of the Labor individuals in some of the practices that have prevailed at various levels. Although times may have changed since Edmund Burke first coined this phrase, the purpose and role of media in Australia has not. In our democracy, media performs the critical role of keeping the public informed about government activities. By virtue of its independence, media has been able to comment on the performance of governments and oppositions and hold them accountable for their actions or to question their actions and to create the public debate that causes the public pressure that is need to be brought on particular issues that impact on the lives of ordinary Australians, on families, communities and states and territories. The independence of media has granted journalists the ability to criticise or applaud based on the virtues of an action or situation. The bills that this Labor government is attempting to pass today remove media's independence from government. The bills that this government, Labor government is attempting to pass today place the final say on ownership decisions and media content into the hands of a government-appointed regulator. These bills grant a government regulator, the public interest media advocate, with the ability to evaluate the standards and codes of conduct with relation to privacy, fairness and accuracy. These bills place a public officer in charge of private media in a move that equates to government control. And anybody who is, holds an office that is funded from a government source is inadvertently under the influence of their minister or their respective line of authority. As a member of the Human Rights Committee, I am well aware that Article 19 of the International Covenant of civil and political rights guarantees freedom of expressions for all Australians on all issues, and it accords them that opportunity to challenge that within their society that they are not happy with. 
and therefore I will continually argue that our media should be free from the constraints of government. Clearly, this proposed public interest media advocate will have the capacity to determine media standards. Not only this, but the scope of the public interest media advocate is so vague that it will be open to interpretation of the government of the day, with ultimate control resting with the minister and the prime minister. To make matters more serious yet, media outlets will have no right of redress for decisions made by the public interest advocate. Decisions of the public interest media advocate are binding and the media outlets will face potentially high costs if they withdraw complaints. All of these measures are designed with the intent to minimise opportunities for media outlets to question the judgment of government and will no doubt strike fear into the hearts of journalists. By all means, while we may not always like or agree with the coverage of politics in media, those of us on this side of the chamber accept that the media perform an important function of informing Australians about the activities of this place within a democracy. It is simply not possible to expect that a government-controlled regulator of a, free, of a free press to adequately keep government accountable for its decisions. This Labor government has only demonstrated once more that it is dysfunctional and in chaos. Trying to push through this legislation without proper scrutiny is a slap across the face to many individuals within the media that believe they are performing a critical role in our democracy. This legislation package was only revealed last week with the intention of pushing it through the parliament as quickly as possible. This government has been talking about making changes for two years now, but have left it until the 11th hour of 5 minutes to 12 to take any action, expecting all stakeholders to simply fall in line on those controversial changes. Not even the government's own members were given the opportunity to properly scrutinise this legislation. Thank you. Now the Prime Minister and her cronies are attempting to force-feed all members of this parliament, leaving no room for disagreement. The minister has been playing tough cop all week, telling the parliament that it could take or leave it, and there was no flexibility to negotiate this legislation. When it became clear that this package did not have the support of the independent MPs yesterday, and today, the government has done a quick shuffle, backtracking from its tough cop stance. We have to ask why the government is so concerned that they feel it is necessary to push these reforms through without adequate opportunity to scrutinise the legislation. This is a growing trend for this government, who seems to believe that it does not need to allow scrutiny for bills it brings before the parliament. Once again, it would seem that this government is more concerned about its own survival than it is about the greater good of governance of our country. The only ones who benefit from these reforms is the government itself. These reforms are detrimental to the quality of the content in our media, and this is most definitely detrimental to the national interest. This government does not have a good track record when it comes to legislative reform. We, only need, we need only to look as far as the carbon tax and the mining tax to see two examples of mismanagement of government programs and ineffective legislation. Deputy Speaker, this government does not have a good track record when it comes to administering new programs, and ironically, this is something that has not escaped the notice of the media. Seven West Media Chairman Kerry Stokes has said, I can only recall legislation being pushed in this haste in the wake of 9-11. My submission is you shouldn't be doing any of this. Fairfax Media CEO Greg Highwood said, to be plain, the impression voiced almost universally over the weekend is that the process is at least unseemingly rushed and the bills mirror that state of affairs. Network 10's Hamish McLennan said, the implications for regional Australia are great and we shouldn't rush the changes through. The public interest media advocate will require all media voices to register with the government. This alone creates confusion as to what the definition of media voice will be. Where will the line between a personal online blog discussing current affairs and an online media outlet containing discussion of public affairs end? Surely the personal opinion will be a huge part of decisions made by the public interest media advocate, and the so-called public, public interest will be open to enormous interpretation. 
This bill will require all media voices to consult before any changes to ownership are made. All changes will need to be approved by the so-called public interest media advocate. These changes are wide-reaching and significant, yet industry and stakeholder input into developing these reforms has been minimal. Now that these reforms have been announced, the government seems determined not to consider the impact on the sector. It would seem that this government is so tied up in its own agenda that it is not interested in having a discussion with the media itself about the changes it intends to enforce. Fairfax Media CEO Greg Highwood has said, and I quote, the practical application of this legislation is that it sets up a model where a minister of the government can pick up the phone to his own appointee and say, fix it. Fix it. Get the media off our backs. It is our strong view, the fact that a government feels it is not getting a fair go from one or other media outlet, is a very poor reason to regulate. In fact, it is the worst reason. We believe and feel that the introduction of a government-appointed regulator to oversee print and digital news gathering journalism will have seriously dangerous consequences for good government. Deputy Speaker, this Labor government is trying to have the entire debate of media reform caught up in media diversity. Media diversity is a challenge that we need to face. It is a complicated and serious challenge that we should consider. It is a challenge that is caught up in the emergence of new media and a diversity of media platforms. It is also a challenge that is caught up in the emergence of shared content, for example, with the collaboration of News Limited and tens, Network 10's Meet the Press. But this is not a challenge that is unpacked or solved by these bills. In fact, this bill barely scratches the surface of dealing with media diversity and instead presents a heavy-handed approach that benefits no stakeholders. Media diversity is not a challenge that should have a band-aid solution applied to it without adequate consultation or discussion. It is an ongoing challenge that requires the investment of time, discussion and industry input. It is a challenge that needs serious consideration and not the half-baked yeah, attempt that, that this government has presented in this bill. It is for this reason, Deputy Speaker, that I must add my voice in opposition to these bills today. Thank you.